I have heard 101 internet arguments about whether or not merino wool base layers drive faster than synthetic base layers. So today, we're going to put it to the test. George back at you with the New Hunter's Guide, the YouTube channel, and a great podcast helping new hunters get started and bringing new insights to all hunters. Today we have a viewer requested video, and guys as always, if there's a test or a review or something you want to see done or addressed, let me know down below in the comments. But you guys wanted to know what dries faster, merino wool base layers or synthetic base layers. Now this is a difficult question to answer, and opinions on this are very very hot and heated. There are people that are utterly convinced that merino wool dries faster because you have those thin, finer fibers. Meanwhile, you have people that are completely persuaded that synthetic base layers will dry faster because basically you have thin plastic fibers that do not absorb water at the molecular level and swell like wool layers. So I started going down the road on the research on this and I was trying to figure out, do wool fabrics actually swell? Do the individual fibers absorb moisture and get bigger and if they do how long does it take for them to shed that moisture and on and on and on and I just decided I don't care it doesn't matter the only thing that matters is how fast do the layers dry why they dry faster or slower we can evaluate that after we answer the first question so today I'm gonna try to figure this out now I know people fight to the death about which base layer is better we are not trying to figure out which base layer is better today we are only trying to figure out one thing which dries faster, not which is warmer. I actually did a test about that. I'll link about that at the end of this video. We're not trying to figure out what's more comfortable. We're not trying to figure out odor or anything else. We're trying to answer one question today and which one dries faster. And I have all of these different base layers back here that we're gonna be experimenting with and testing. Now, what makes this really complicated, guys, is there is no company that makes a synthetic and a merino base layer that are identical except they're just just made of different materials. Okay, nobody does that. Sitka is maybe the closest. They have a core merino and then a core synthetic layer, but they're not identical. And even if they were the exact same thickness, the exact same weight, they would not be the same weave. The reason is these two materials are just different. Their very makeup and properties are different. So the way that we weave them together and use them in a garment is always going to be different. But I have devised the test that I think will enable us to get to the bottom of this question. Now I have three merino wool base layers right here, different weights, all light to medium. I'll name them momentarily. And then I've got three more synthetic base layers right here, all lightweight to medium weight. And I'll name those as well, give you guys all the details on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh all of them dry, get their dry weight, dry measurements with the hanger. And then I'm going to soak them all in a bucket of water. I'm then going to hang them up and just let them dry for a minute just, just to get let the big water fall off. I'm going to weigh them again and get their saturated soaking wet weight. Then what we're going to do is come back in about an hour and it's a nice warm 75, 80 degree day here with a light breeze. We're going to come back in an hour and then we're going to weigh them all one more time to see how much of that weight have they evaporated over the course of an hour. I will then calculate the percentage of water evaporated for each layer. We will average the synthetics and then we will average the merino and then we will compare the averages of those two groups. This should help us get away from any garment specific weight, specific composition. We're looking at the percentage of evaporation per garment and then per category. And so that should let us answer this question or at least give us some interesting information to go on. All right, let's see what these things weigh dry. First up, we have our Sitka Merino core base layer. This is a 120 weight Merino and it is coming in at 7.2 ounces. Next up, we have our Icebreakers Merino base layer. This is a 200 weight and this comes in at 9.3 ounces. Next up, we have our First Light Kilm. This is a 250 weight merino base layer. And this one's coming in at 14.4 ounces. 
Next up, we have our Patagonia Capilene. This is a light to midweight layer, and this one is coming in at 9.9 ounces. After that, we have our Under Armour Cold Gear synthetic base layer. This one is coming in at 11.6 ounces. And then last, we have our Cabela's EWCS base layer. This is a midweight, and this one's coming in at 10.5 ounces. All right, it's time to get these things wet. All right, and here is our bucket. These things are totally soaked. All right, let's get these base layers hung up. So we got here the Sitka, and yeah, we are just pouring water off of this stuff. Next, we got the uh, icebreaker. And we got the first light. And if you guys were wondering, yes, I am using duck decoy line for my clothesline here. This thing's heavy. I tell you what, if you fell in the river wearing one of these, you would not just be wet, you would be heavy. You're gonna let them dry just for a minute to let the big water fall off and then we'll weigh them. All right, looks like the big drops have fallen. First up, we have our totally soaking wet Sitka. One pound, 2.2 ounces. And then next we have our soaking wet icebreaker. We are coming in at one pound, 5.7 ounces. And we have our soaking light first light, soaking wet first light. We are coming in at two pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces. And then next we have our soaking wet Patagonia, which is coming in at one pound, 15.6 ounces. And then we have our soaking wet Under Armour, which is coming in at two pounds, 1.4 ounces. And we have our soaking wet Cabela's, which is coming in at three pounds, 1.2 ounces. All right, guys, I'm gonna spread these out here across the clothesline, and we're gonna come back in an hour and see what happens. Well, guys, it has been about an hour. These things have been out here. It's been the perfect day. They've been all spread out. Nothing's touching. Light breeze, no sunshine, which is perfect. I was a little bit concerned that some sun might give an advantage to the darker ones. But a couple caveats here before we look at the data. This is a test. I believe it's a fair test, but it is not the test. All right, keep in mind these are hanging. They're not being worn. If you were wearing them, it would might be a different story. Now, of course, I couldn't wear them all at the same time under the same conditions and do this test. If I did one after another, I'd have to sit and do the same thing, but the weather's gonna change, the day's gonna change, things are gonna happen that wouldn't work. I couldn't get six people to come out here and wear them all for an hour, because everybody's got different body mass, circulation, they sweat differently, different temps, all those kind of things. This is the fairest test that I could come up with, but the level of realism only goes so high. Now we're gonna weigh them all here, but the real insight is gonna come afterwards when we get the data, do the math, plot this thing out, out. I'm going to convert all of these pounds and ounces numbers just to straight ounces to make the math simpler, and then we'll total everything up and see what happens. All right, let's see what they weigh. All right, it has been an hour to the minute, and we have our Sitka. I can still feel a little bit of moisture on the bottom there, and we are at 9.2 ounces. Next, we have our icebreaker. Can still feel a little moisture there and we are at 12.9 ounces next we have the first light these are all definitely still a bit wet at the bottom one pound 10.6 ounces next we've got our patagonia capilene i think this one is made out of recycled water bottles or something one pound 1.3 ounces next we have our under armor dry fit See how dry this thing is. One pound, 7.3 ounces. And then we've got our Cabela's, ECWCS, which is weighing in at one pound, 10.2 ounces. 
Now I'm gonna crunch all these numbers, put into a complicated spreadsheet, but something I should have told you guys from the very beginning of this video is that this is not sponsored. None of these companies know that I'm even making this video. And none of these companies sent me any of these base layers. I either bought them all with my own money, my wife got them at a thrift store for pennies on the dollar, or they came from family members for Christmas or my birthday, things like that. But I would ask you guys to consider supporting the channel on Patreon, you help make test videos, ammo test, field test, things like this possible. I would really appreciate your support. And please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Help this video reach more people. And of course, if you like stuff like this, you might as well hit the subscribe button also. All right, now for the math. Well, guys, are you ready for this data? Because I got so excited after I finally figured out, one, how to do the math, and then did the math, got the actual results, double-checked everything, make sure it was bulletproof. Couple interesting things before I put the chart up here. The amount of fabric that we tested on the Merino versus the synthetic, almost the exact same weight. It was just around 30 ounces of dry fabric of Merino versus about 30 ounces of dry fabric for synthetic. It was one or two ounces different, but they were almost identical in terms of dry garment weight if you total up the whole category. However, the synthetic absorbed a lot more water than the Merino did. I was very surprised by that. And they were in the bucket the same amount of time. They were submerged by water the same amount of time. I mean, plus or minus seconds. All right, and I left them in there and just all of them sit for a few good minutes to make sure they got soaked. But without further ado, let's see some data. So check this out here. For the Merino, you can see that the Sitka came in at 82% dry after an hour. Higher number is better here. The Icebreaker, 71% dry after an hour. The First Light Kiln, 54% dry after an hour. Now, of course, as these things go up in weight, they weigh more, they absorb more, they dry slower. That's a given, you would just expect that. Now, when you look at the synthetic, the Patagonia Capilene, 66% dry. All right, then the Under Armour Cold Gear, which was the heaviest of those ones, 46%. Ooh, and then you got the Cabela's at 59%. So it's pretty clear from this data right here that it looks like the Merino base layers are ahead. But let's take a look at the final chart. This is the one that really matters. This is when you cross everything else off. You look at the averages category by category, and we can see, check it out, the Merino wool dried 69% versus the synthetic dried 57%. 69 versus 57. All right, so the Merino wool dried significantly faster than the synthetic did, or significantly more, or actually it's both. Now I know somebody's gonna be angry with this result, okay? And keep in mind, these are not all of the base layers that are out there. These are just the ones that I had on hand that I was able to test for this test. All right, so if you tested other base layers, you may get slightly different results. However, I can tell you that the fabric and the weave is different on, on all of them. All the merinos are different, all the synthetics are different. So you had a good sampling of different garment construction, but I did not see this result coming. I thought they would have been almost even, but interesting that the merino did significantly better than the synthetic layers did. All right, so next, check out the link to Patreon down below, and then check out this video right here where I did a dry and wet test to try to figure out which base layers were warmest, and check out this video right here where I did a similar test to find out which hunting socks were warmest. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Till next time, God bless you, and go get them in the woods.